Now, in honor of my attempt to grow my own ginger, I've decided to make a batch of ginger wine. Hi, this is DIY Fermentation, your site for doing fermentation on a shoestring budget. To make my version of ginger wine, I'm going to be using about 16 ounces or about 450 grams of ginger root. I'm going to be using up to four cups of dark brown sugar. I'm going to be using one orange, the juice of half a lemon, one big handful or half a cup of raisins. I'm going to be using a Red Star Premier Blanc wine yeast. No special reason, just as it just happens to be my go-to yeast. You can use anything you've got. We'll need about a gallon of water or four liters of water. We need a one gallon or four liter carboy jug, demijohn, take your pick, uh, to do fermentation in. An airlock with bung. And we'll be using either one step or star sand to do our sanitation with. We want to make sure that everything we use all of our equipment is going to be sanitized before we start this project. And that's what I'm going to be using to make this wine. Using your preferred method, first thing we need to do is to remove the skin from our ginger. Now for this next step, we want to thinly slice our ginger. Now, just like you're making ginger tea. Now you can either use one of these, or you can use one of these, or you can use one of these. Either way, we just want to make sure that we can extract the juice from the ginger. So if you don't have any of those, I'm sure you've got one of these. So just go ahead and thinly slice your ginger. Now that that's done using one of the earlier mentioned methods, although I will say it was pretty quick, we're now ready to move on to the next step. Since we're in the process of slicing things up, let's go ahead and slice up our orange. Let's go ahead and slice our lemons, or lemon, and let's get that juiced. And while we're at it, since we're playing with knives, let's give our raisins a rough chop. That'll do it. And that is that. Now I've taken the liberty of putting everything into a straining bag. Now you don't have to. I mean, you're going to end up straining all of this out. You can either do it now or you can do it later. So we're just going to go ahead and put that in our pot. And let's go ahead and add in our water. set of a medium but hey you know it's just whatever number suits you suits you well and then following that we just want to put our top on and let that come to a boil now that our 
ginger tea mixture has come to a boil, we can now do a couple of things. One, we can turn off the heat. And two, we can go ahead and add our sugar, which by the way, was four cups of packed sugar, which is actually, you can actually see the entire bag, and the bag was 32 ounces, or two pounds, or 907 grams for you non curio folk. So we can go ahead and add that. Now, I just want to get it in there and give it a good stir. Put the cover back on and let that come down to room temperature. With our juice mixture now down to relatively room temperature, we can go ahead and begin the process of moving it from the pot to the carboy using freshly sanitized equipment. Let's go ahead and extract our ginger mixture. Move that off to the side for a moment and begin the process of transferring everything from here to here. The fact that it's gurgling like that, incorporating some oxygen into the mix, is actually a good thing. Because later on, our yeast is going to need that extra oxygen to go ahead and process of creating this into wine. Now in this particular case, we've overflowed it just by a little bit, which is a bit more than what we actually need. So we're gonna, we're gonna pour off some of the excess and we're gonna save that for something later on because the next time that we rack it in about a week or two, we can actually pour this back into the carboy instead of water to keep from weakening our wine. All right, that having been done, we can go ahead and add our lemon juice, which is acting as our acid blend substitute, which is gonna help incorporate some brightness into the wine. Basically, it won't taste as flat. And then following that, we wanna go ahead and add the yeast. Now, using that leftover mixture that I had before I put the yeast in. Taking a hydrometer reading off of that comes in at 1.076. Again, we're only using a quarter of a teaspoon of wine yeast, which is all we need. And try not to just dump it in there, but as best you can, just slowly incorporate it. Now, if you're more comfortable with blooming your yeast beforehand, please go, go ahead and feel free. That works just as well. I've never had any problems with doing it this way. Put a cap on for the moment. And let's move on. Let's go ahead and put an airlock on our carboy. Jug, demijohn, take your pick. I already filled up to the correct levels. And one of the last things we knew, 
need to do for this part of the operation is to go ahead and label our creation. We are making ginger wine. We started making it on this date. And our original gravity reading started in at 1.076. Now then, we'll let it sit in the carboy for the next several weeks until we start seeing a layer of sediment building at the bottom, at which point we'll rack it into a, a secondary carboy and continue that process until the wine becomes clear over the next several months. It'll be about a year before I decided to go ahead and bottle this and uh, give it a tasting at that point. Now, I have seen videos where this is being drunk after several weeks. I mean, that's entirely up to you. But I tend to believe that the longer you wait, the clearer it will get and the better it will be. Now, you can probably look at the link above and see some of the follow-up operations, which includes the subsequent rackings and eventually the gassing and then the bottling, that whole process uh, to find out what the next steps are going to be before we actually get to taste this ginger wine. So if you like what you see here, please click on the subscribe button. doesn't cost you anything. Better yet, become a member, help support this channel. Donations through the PayPal account, donations through the Patreon account are also welcome. So until then, I'll see you in the next video.